Good day and it is the first segment of a week at the plot for this week and it is Thursday morning. We've actually been back in Guernsey for a few days because it was mum's 90th birthday on Tuesday. So we were there for that, we came back last night and I've come to the plot now, it's just coming up to 10 o'clock and I thought I would just have a look around and see what has happened on the plot since I went away. I, have, I haven't really looked around at all. I hope things are going to have germinated in the um, polytunnel and also out here, the beetroot, the turnips, those type of things. I hope they're going to have germinated as well. What I can see is that all of the potatoes are actually breaking above ground, the colleen potatoes. So each of those that I've planted, I can see a little bit of green from each of those. But anyway, I've kept my eyes quite tight and I haven't looked at anything. So let's just do a mini tour. Let's do a mini tour. It's certainly looking both busy and empty at the same time. That cardoon has really grown in the days that we've been away, not surprisingly. This bed is empty. It's got some poppies in there. Uh, this is going to be a bean bed. Oh, my shadow's coming in. Let's go over here and then do it the other way. Everything's a bit messy. Oh, look, there's some dandelion heads. I'm going to need to take those off so they don't seed. I like dandelions, but keep on top of them. These are our Oregon sugar pod. They're doing fine. I'm going to need to start putting some string on them to hold them up. That bed again is empty. Anything in there is either a weed or coming out. There is one poppy in there, so I'll most probably leave that. Germination of our turnips. There's Petrowski here, Snowball here. I'd expected them to be bigger. I mean, the, the snowball have are growing, but I think they're already being attacked by leaf miner. Can you see there's holes in those leaves? And in fact, down here where the Petrowski is, there's holes there as well. Oh, never mind, they are growing. The garlic needs a weed, but is actually doing pretty well. Go over to the broad beans. Yeah, what a broad bean year it's been for me this year. Very bizarre. There are some forming pods though. If we go back on ourselves. These are golden sweet mange too. The Oregon sugar pod is mange too as well. I'm noticing a bit of slug damage down there. Slug or snail damage. But they'll they'll get going. Train driver mountain range. Mange two stroke sweet pea. Not sweet pea. Mange two stroke pea. Yeah, they're looking fine. Coming up here. So these are our Colleen new potatoes, Colleen early potatoes rather, and I think you can see at each point where I have planted there is some greenery breaking the ground. Is there any here? Maybe not there. there sh what's that? There should be some here but there isn't. But elsewhere, wherever I planted, there is greenery, which is good. Beetroot. Yeah, there's some germination. Can you see here? Germination over there. Something that looks very much lot, not like beetroot. But actually, 
pretty bare germination. Was this old seed? I've got a feeling it was. Let's leave it a week and maybe I have to re-sow. Let's give that a shake. You'll remember we're saving seeds from here. Lift the bag up. Give it a shake, good shake. And that will um, help the pollen fall and pollinate the flower. Lots of bee sounds. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Those have all gone over. I'll shake those other two bags shortly. Lots and lots of dandelions. So pretty. Go over to here. Yeah, I think everything in there is fine. Oh. Bashing you on the head, bashing me on the head actually. And then, sorry, that was up here. We've got the Portuguese cabbage. Down here, we've got Brussels sprouts over here. So I'm not holding it properly, I've lost my angle. Brussels sprouts over here, and dazzling blue kale here. Yeah, I'll shut that properly in a minute. Let's go over to the bench. All the, uh, I did realize that the blackberry really didn't show up in that last segment of last week's A Week at the Plot. But hopefully you can see how it's tied in here and here. And look at the flowers coming. Can we focus on those? No, but there's plenty of flowers coming on there. Can you see? That'll be great. Tidying, tidying. Onions not really coming to anything. Oh, our rhubarb. This is the one that we let go to seed each year. That's going to seed rather nicely. Oh, my lettuce has certainly been watered. <coughs> It's at this stage that you really do value plot neighbours who are really great. And everything up here is fine. Oh yes, that's all been watered. Sunflowers, obviously. <clears throat> Chamomile here. These are the lavender cuttings. Other cuttings here. We'll look at those more closely another day. Spares. Yay. Oh yeah, and I can, oh look, isn't that glorious? It doesn't give great apples, but the blossom is just so amazing. Oh, lots of work to do. Oh, the tree lilies have begun to grow. One here and one here. Now this was shut and clearly my plot neighbour has thought it was getting a bit too warm. So they've done it so that air could get in, which is fabulous. Yeah, the carrots all look fine. We will be harvesting those this week. Right, let's have a look under here. Oh. Right, two courgettes have germinated. We had one before we went. Some Amish sherbet, the red ox heart, two Brad's atomic grape, and then either one black crim and one soldaki, or two black crim and two soldaki. So poor germination, really. Let's go into here. Oh dear, no. So, no pink Bulgarian, three Amish paste, no Guernsey tomatoes, no lettuce. 
So is the compost a bit hinky for seeds? Maybe I'm coming back to that. But why have these red ox heart germinated so, so well? I think here, every one apart from one red ox heart has germinated. And only three out of about 12 Amish paste, sorry, Amish sherbet, and only three out of 16 Amish paste. No pink Bulgarian. Gosh, I'm surprised at that. So I am going to have to re sow. Thanks very much for Leanne for sending so many Guernsey tomato seeds because clearly I will need more. But you know what? We've got some germination here. So let's be happy with that. And clearly these have been watered as well by my plot neighbours. Great to have plot neighbours who are great. Right. Well, we'll oh, and the Ceanothus over there is beginning to come out. That's lovely. But yes, look at that apple tree. Gorgeous. So actually a bit of a mixed bag. Most things are doing something, but certainly the Petrowski turnips, poor germination. The snowball turnips, good germination, but are being eaten, I think, by leaf miners. Beetroot, poor germination. The brassicas are doing fine, some of our tomatoes are doing fine and some not. And two courgettes from Old Seed. So, yeah, I think I might get some specialist seed sowing compost and do second sowings. I think I will. Now up there is a plane coming towards us. But over there, I'm not sure if you can see above the tree line, sort of, oh, it's gone underneath, is a red kite. That's a bird of, well, it's not a bird. Is it a bird of prey? It's a, it eats carrion. Can you see it? I don't think you can, but it's swirling above that sort of cone tree or cone shaped tree. Lovely day, lovely day. Right, I will leave it there and stop boring you. I'll be down here maybe later on or maybe tomorrow, I think tomorrow, to do some tidying and potentially seed sowing over the weekend. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's rather early, it's eight o'clock. And I'm down here just actually enjoying the quiet at the moment. We've got a skip coming today so that our plot holders who've got rubbish on their plots can get rid of some of it. Uh, these are sort of for larger items. Other things can be taken to our local recycling centre. But there's some sort of bigger items and some sort of long-standing items that can go into a skip. So we've got a 12-yard skip coming today. So that's quite a large skip. And we're not sure what time it's coming. We've asked for a call beforehand so that we can make sure that the gates are open. But they couldn't promise that they would do that. Or they couldn't guarantee they would do that, rather. So... I'm down here on the 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. shift, waiting for the skip to arrive. And I'll get on and do a few jobs whilst I'm here. There's some weeding to do, there's some tidying to do. But it really is quite, quite early. Even the dandelions aren't up at the moment. I'm not sure if you know, but dandelions close at night and then reopen in the daytime. And um, most of the dandelions, you can most probably see a few just beginning to open. 
the ones by the shed are firmly shut at the moment <laughs> but give it an hour or so and a bit more sun and they'll all be open and showing their glorious golden yellow to us so yeah that's that's what i'm going to be doing for the next couple of hours just waiting here keeping an eye on the gate when those big skip lorries come you hear the sort of chains clanking anyway so i'm going to get on and do some work i won't take you with me because yeah i'm just going to get on and do stuff mainly weeding everything needs to strim as well so i'll get on and strim and what i have noticed this morning is that even though the dandelions aren't up yet the poached egg plant that vivi gave us a couple of years ago is beginning to flower which is lovely and of course there's sort of blossoms uh, across the plot you can see that apple tree t just slightly to the left of center has got blossom on it though that's all beginning to fade and of course we saw the blossom on the apple tree on our plot yesterday which is just glorious it doesn't have any scent but the color of it is just fabulous so i will leave it oh i've just noticed there's an aqualegia about to open as well there's so many it's funny having been away for a few days well five days i think we're away there's so much that has grown in that time particularly the grass um and of course some weeds and that's sort of what i'm going to get on and do now i think the weeds and then i'll do some strimming over the weekend but i'll just leave you now with a little bit of the natural sounds no parakeets so far this morning i think that was a robin just then see you soon bye Good day and welcome to a Sunday segment of A Week at the Plot and the final segment for the week. It feels sort of quite odd because of course I was in Guernsey with Richard at the beginning of the week with mum for her birthday and um, now I seem to have done quite a lot on the plot over the last few days and on the site as well. So it's been really quite um, busy, particularly yesterday because we had the work party. The skip that arrived on Friday is now virtually full. We've got another mattress to put on or two mattresses to put on that were that shouldn't be here anyway, but were left by a previous tenant and a couple of other larger items. And they'll just top off the whole skip and then that will go on Tuesday. But at the moment, the skip is actually covered in tarpaulin so that nobody can put anything else on because we know what's already going to go on and it will then be full but it was really it was a good day yesterday we also expanded the dead hedge area and we are trying to encourage people to grow and manage their plots more environmentally and more sustainably we have started a wood pile in the paddock area so that's where anyone who's got wood that cannot be utilized maybe rotting wood or or broken wood that can't be utilized for their plot or for other areas of the site that can be put there and we will use it for our bonfire that we have on bonfire night on the 5th of uh, november so that that is going to be an area that people can put their wood their decrepit wood there and it may be used for the bonfire that's the aim of it though if people want to take it and use it for hugel culture or something else then that's obviously up to them and they can they can do that and they can take that big plane going over just hang on one sec the plane has gone over and the sun has come out next to that wood pile carrying on from what i was saying we're going to be building three compost bays 
and that's going to be for managed communal composting. So you won't be allowed to just put anything on there and go and do it yourself. It's actually going to be an area that people will be able to put things aside, to compost, and then on a work party day or a selected day, people can bring things and they'll go into the first bay of the compost bin and then we'll manage the, the turning of that. Um, we have the dead hedges that people can put their, their prunings and brambles and things on. So, you know, in what we're doing here, we're trying to give people the options to be more sustainable in their growing and be more environmentally friendly as well. Of course, you know, some people are, are they have their ways of doing things and they, they won't change their ways. But at least if we give people options, then um, hopefully they can decide to, to, you know, go down the way which is better for, for us, for the site and for the planet. One of the things I'm really excited about now is I'm going to be doing some seed sowing, some additional seed sowing. And there's another plane going over. So the seed sowing I'm going to be doing is re-sowing some tomatoes, four types of tomatoes, Guernsey tomato, um, pink Bulgarian, black cream and Amish paste. I'm going to be re-sowing some courgettes because we've got 50% germination in uh, what we have already sown. So I'm going to be sowing four more courgettes today. And of course, we've had no germination whatsoever in our leaf salads, in our red and green salad bowl. So I'm going to be sowing two types of salad leaf, lobjoy's green and outrageous lettuce. So I'm going to get on and do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to put some perlite into the compost to lighten up the compost and to um, give a bit more aeration to it. I don't think we've had hinky compost, but I, I don't think that is going to be a bad thing to do to add the perlite, especially as I have it anyway. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to re -sew and hopefully... The germination because it is warmer generally at the moment and it's going down to like seven or eight degrees at night so not too bad at night either hopefully we'll get better germination than we have had um but i really do think that that cold that we had um knocked that germination so significantly i've i've never had such spotty germination across um different varieties of tomatoes and seeds in fact Yet the red ox heart, I mean, gosh, you know, they must be really tough beasts because tw uh, 11 out of 12 seeds that we sowed have germinated. Um, the other one obviously decided not to. Anyway, into the poly. Let's do some pricking out and I'll show you the perlite mix that I'm going to use. So this is the germination from the seed sowing that we did or oh, about four weeks or more ago four or five weeks i'll put a date on here at the back here we've got guernsey tomatoes no germination whatsoever these came from lian um no germination there whatsoever this is our salad leaf red green here red here no germination whatsoever amish paste you can see these are three seedlings that have germinated i mean germination of our amish paste is usually 100 percent pink bulgarian at the back nothing there yet courgettes yellow courgettes two plants doing relatively well two not having germinated so far at all brad's atomic grape tomatoes here then here these are very close to the to the marker so this could be soldaki and this could be black crim but they they could be both the same oh but look look what i'm seeing <gasps> oh can you see there can you see that germination there oh they're just taking ages to germinate oh and i've just noticed over here anyway sorry Oh dear. Coming over here, Amish Sherbet. We've got three that I saw yesterday. 
There's one at the back that has come up here. And then these here are red ox heart, which actually, if I pull this up, can you see a germination there? That's from yesterday. That wasn't there yesterday. So there are three bits of germination that weren't there yesterday. Oh, it's, um, oh, what do I do now? Do I do, do I sow more tomatoes? Oh, I was so sure when I came down here this morning that I was going to be re -sowing. But you know what? I'm going to be doing some re -sowing. I'm going to be doing some re -sowing, but maybe I'll be more sparse in the re that I do do and see what happens. See if we have any more germination here or here or in this tray here. Isn't that, isn't that intriguing? Maybe they are just taking ages. I do not think though that the lettuce here is going to germinate. I scrubbed up this compost and I see no germination there whatsoever. So I am going to do more salad leaves. I'm definitely going to do more courgettes because I want more than two courgette plants. And I can always give courgettes away. And of course I can always give tomatoes away. So I think I'm going to do another two trays like this, this size of mixed core of mixed tomatoes rather. I was going to say mixed courgettes of mixed tomatoes. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Let me just mix up the perlite mix uh, with compost and I'll show you that. This is the perlite mix. I've done about a third perlite and two thirds compost. As I say, the adding a third will dilute the nutrients by a third and it'll add aeration. And it's also significantly lightened up the, the compost already. So yeah, I'm gonna sow some seeds with this now. Well, I have to say that felt rather good. So I've potted on these tomatoes, pricked out and potted them on. At the back here, we have one Amish paste, which has got the label. All the others are red ox heart. Then here we have outrageous lettuce, sorry, outrageous lettuce at the front and Lobjoy's green at the back. Amish paste at the front, black crim at the back, Guernsey tomatoes at the back here and pink Bulgarian at the front. And then over here, we've got the Guernsey tomatoes that we sowed a few weeks ago, and then various of the seedlings around here. Everything has had a really good water. And obviously I hope we'll have more germination over here, but particularly here. Well, and at the back here is the additional four courgettes that I sowed at the back. Oh yeah, fingers crossed for all of these, fingers crossed for all of them. But I have really enjoyed doing this. Um, it was interrupted because one of my fellow plot holders lost her keys for her car. So um, 45 minutes was spent looking for the keys and they were eventually found, which is great. It's funny, that's the fourth set of keys lost and found um, in the last three weeks. Um, yeah, I think I might actually put a little key hook in the shed and put my keys on it. They always stay in my pocket, but I think I might put a key hook on in the shed. Yeah, I might do that. Anyway, that's, that's digressing. These will have plastic lids where well, you can see them over here, right at the back. They'll have their plastic lids on later. Um, overnight and I'll keep them like that I think for the coming week or so because it's still getting relatively cool at night and just that little bit of additional heat will do them good. Ah, oh, fabulous.
it's about one o'clock now and it's turning into a rather lovely Sunday afternoon. The sun's behind a cloud at the moment but when it's out it's just glorious and warm. I think the plot's looking a bit tired with some things going over like the brassicas but of course they're looking great. In need of work there's strimming to do and I'll get on and do that next week. It looks as though it's going to remain dry and therefore keep an eye on your seedlings and anything that you're planting out because they'll need tending to in terms of watering. But I think the site's also looking rather lovely. It's green and fresh, even though, as I said, it's a little bit tired. Much work to do, but that's okay. I lost a few days with being with mum, but, you know, that was glorious being with mum, so that's okay. So strimming to do, I've watered the plants on the bench again this morning, so they're all looking fine. I've noticed a few potatoes growing in the bed to the right of it where we're going to be planting or sowing carrots and parsnips next week. So those potatoes will have to come out. In the front of us, some of those Marvel of Four Seasons are beginning to bolt. Um, I had obviously hoped that we'd have seedlings to put out by now, but we know that the green and red salad bowl that we did a month or so ago did not germinate. So I may have to resort to buying some seedlings if um, fellow plot holders here don't have any. So I'll give a shout out first to see if anyone has got any spare salad leaf seedlings. I'm going to be taking, I think, two of those home, the Marvel of Four Seasons, one to have in a wrap for lunch, and the other one I think we're going to have maybe um, pizza and salad this evening, so yeah. And of course, we're soon going to be into May as well, um, you know, a week, and we'll be tipping over into May. And that's when we're going to start thinking about whether the garlic can be harvested at the end of next month. Of course, there's lots to do before that. And maybe next week we'll get some beans in. Maybe next week we'll get some beans in. Let's try. Yep. Anyway, stop waffling, Paul. I'm going to go. I hope you've enjoyed this week's A Week at the Plot. And I'll see you again very soon on Planet Vegetaria if you're there or in a week's time if you watch this on YouTube. Is that a cabbage white butterfly? Oh, it's taunting me. There's two. Right, I'm going. Three. Bye.